necessarily to hear me preach, but uh, just to acknowledge that Christ is your Savior in the first place in your life, and it's a privilege to come and worship together with others of like mind. If you have your Bibles, please turn to the Epistle of 1 John, the Epistle of 1 John. Uh, a little instructions before we get started here. Uh, you know the area that we're working in. We're working in the epistle of 1 John. My suggestion is this. Read through it throughout the week and just allow the Holy Spirit to quicken to your heart and your mind the things that will stand out and you can acknowledge that, you know, what you're doing is you're hearing the voice of God. Especially the area in which we are now in chapter 2. Uh, you want to read that over. I've read it over every day this week yeah, out of different translations. Uh, and just to get a different perspective maybe how they might present it. And uh, I like my translation. So uh, New King James, so if you have that, uh, you'll enjoy it as I open this up, uh, how it might speak to you as it spoke to me. So let's just have a prayer. Holy Spirit, we thank you that truly you're the teacher. And Lord, uh, you use earthly vessels to bring forth your word. And Lord, you have given us your, your word in writing. And uh, the Holy Spirit will open up to each individual what is needed in their life and they will have uh, understanding and wisdom from you, Lord. And I'm thankful that I can have this time just to share my heart with the church here. And we ask your blessings on the word this morning. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, Amen. 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 Well, praise God. Rain. We needed some rain. And so, uh, and it really rained last night. So uh, we're thankful for that. And Jan and I did some yard work and it was just in time. All right. We're going to pick up in verse 3. We talked about uh, if you sin, you know, we have an advocate with the Father. Christ has uh, become our sacrifice and by his blood as we repent of things that may hinder us. Uh, throughout the week you're going to have these attacks that come at you. And you may not res respond in the right way, uh, and, but that's the opportunity to say, Lord, thank you for uh, just showing me what I need to take care of in my walk with you. And so I encourage you to uh, just be mindful. Keep short accounts of your life. Uh, don't let anything go too long. You can find yourself, you know, when you're driving down the highway, uh, if you go off the road a little bit, given a rut, you just don't want to jerk back onto the road. You want to gradually come back on to the road. And it's the same thing with our Christian life. You want to be careful uh, when things come at you and recognize where they're coming from. Uh, but, you know, we're going to see a little later on, I believe it's in chapter 2 of 1 John, is that uh, greater or three Greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. And so when we have that confidence in knowing who we are in Christ, uh, we will be able to overcome at different times of these things that confront us. Our study at 1 John, I believe, is to establish. Remember I told you last week there are words to look for or maybe not necessarily look for, but they stand out as you read the Word of God. They're not placed there uh, accidentally. They're placed there to help us to fully comprehend the things of the Lord and how they pertain to our, our lives. And so we're called to establish our hearts in the Word of God. Can you agree with that? Yeah. Okay, three of you agree. Do you agree with that? Amen. 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 I'm sure when you go to college, they don't expect you to bring your books or anything and you don't have to say anything. Right? <laughs> <laughs> when you go to college, are you going to 
boy. <laughs> wow. I, used to, I taught up in the college here for three years, and uh, one fellow walked up to me and said, you know, I don't plan to be here every, every week. Uh, just mark me, check me in. And I said, no, it doesn't work that way. If I'm here, you're here. Well, I, we just, this will just, just check me in. I said, you're not here, you're not passing my class. Right? You got to show up. Yeah. Say, yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, oh, good to be a teacher today. So, we need to establish our hearts. I believe most believers have a desire for truth in Christ. I believe that. Yes. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm encouraging you or reminding you of the things of God. Uh, you probably have heard things like this before, but you didn't hear them from me. And that's important because I have a little different perspective maybe and it will encourage you. And so who we are in Christ, uh, but I kind of think in the overall church, there's, there's a lack of courage to surrender lives, their lives to, of, of their life to the things of God fully. Uh, I just met a man that I was sharing with that told me, you know, I want just enough to get by. <laughs> you know, God calls us to give our hearts fully to Him, not a part of our hearts. We are to be fully committed to the ways of the Lord. Jesus said to his followers, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And if you can kind of understand that, is that there's things we desire to do in the natural that we struggle with. I know I set out, I was going to work out every day, build up my muscles with these weights, and go like this. And I get up in the morning now, and I have them sitting right in front of me, and I said, good for you. <laughs> and I do nothing with them. So when Janice comes into the room, I grab them quickly. And I go like this. <laughs> so she thinks I'm working out. And boy, she probably says, boy, is he faithful to that. Not always. Uh, we have to put aside the flesh. That's nothing new. You know uh, the Bible says if you walk in the Spirit, you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. That's Romans chapter 8. You should read that occasionally, uh, maybe once a week, just to remind yourself that I want to be spiritually minded, not fleshly minded. As we get into this, you're going to see that truth. Uh, especially those things that pull us aside or pull us off of the, on that straight, narrow path. One of the thoughts I gave a while back was that uh, Saul, on the road to Damascus was led by Ananias to the road, the street called Straight, which is still there today in Israel. And uh, all of us need to stay on Straight Street. What do you say to that? Amen. All right, good. Hang in there, you're going to be wild. <laughs> Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you for, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present yourself as a sacrifice unto the Lord, and be not conformed to this world, but transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now you cannot wait for Sunday to get your mind renewed. You should do it daily. Amen. Amen. There you go. Amen. One amen. One person who makes that. Amen. All right. All right. Praise God. Spiritual life begins with spiritual birth, which occurs through faith in Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. 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 Faith in Jesus Christ joins us with God's life and eternal life. Amen. And so keep that in mind, uh, the confession that you make before the Lord, God listens. I read that to you last week. He will listen, and He rejoices in those who acknowledge Him and then walk in His ways. And so as we pick up uh, uh, our lesson today from uh, starting at uh, the testings of knowing Him, or that's not our title, our title is, I think it's a little bit different, yes, the test of knowing Him. 
My purpose and my goal here is to get you to understand that you can know God and you can hear His voice. God is speaking all the time. But we're not always listening. We're, things occupy our time and distract us, but God is always speaking and we need to understand He's speaking to us who believe and know Him. And it says this, now, by this we know, and if you have your Bibles and, or not, uh, you have a handout, write that down, know that we know Him, if we keep His commandments. <clears throat> he who says, I know Him, and does not keep His commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in Him. Now, I didn't say that, the Word of God says that. Amen? That's John. So if you have a question about that thought, take it up with John. <laughs> All right. But whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. By this we know, here again, know that we are in him. The whole point of this whole book on uh, the epistle of 1 John is to know who you are in Christ. And when you know, no one can take it from you. Not even the devil. He may come and lie to you. He may come and try to deceive you. But you need to stand fast and say, I know who I, who I am in Christ Jesus. Verse 6. He who says he abides in him, there's another good word, ought himself also to walk just as he walked. So that's that's uh, that brings forth evidence. Now part of that evidence is this, that you are willing to come into the house of the Lord, be with other people of like man, like like mine, and worship God. Now I, you know, there's something about raising your hands. These songs that, that were selected today, I really enjoyed them. Took me right back to when I first made a commitment to the Lord that we would sing them over and over about two or three times. And I'll tell you, that place was happy. I never thought people could do that in a church. But uh, it, it was wonderful because you loosen up and you start let your heart just be surrendered to the Lord. Surrender all to God. And this is a place where you can do it. No one's going to look at you and laugh at you if you lift up your head. Do you see these young men up here beating these bongos and these drums? <laughs> I mean, come on. They have courage to come up here and do that. Amen. So, you know, understand that there's a benefit in releasing yourself to the Lord. We are called to walk a new, new way when we become born again. 2 Corinthians 5.17 If anyone be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And so we understand that new birth brought forth some new freedom. I'm free in Christ. I don't want to be bound up by religion. Uh, and another thought we must consider we must see the warnings in God's Word. You know, we just talked about if you're not operating in love, it doesn't mean that you, you agree with someone that is contrary to what you're walking in or what you're doing or even someone on the job. It just means that you honor them with respect. We, must, we need to be respectful. We need to just assure people that, you know, there's something different about our lives. There's a, there's a light in us. You may not, you may look in the mirror and say, it doesn't look like I've changed. But if you're standing up and saying, Jesus Christ is my Savior and my Lord, there is a change. And it's in Christ Jesus, who was made sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might become the righteousness of God in Him. Are you in Him? Yes. Amen. 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 I, you know, when we have visitors coming, when you hear, when they come in and they're sitting there and they hear, Amen, brother. Yes, I believe. They'll get excited too. And they'll want to bring others back here with them and be part of what's going on here. Verse 7. 
Brethren, I write no new commandment to you, but an old commandment, which you have had from the beginning. The old commandment is the, is the word, which you heard from the beginning. Again, a new commandment I write to you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. Now, back in Matthew chapter 6, it says, we are light and we are salt. And I think someone, I think George said, or someone, or Deb said about, you know, living what we believe. Are you trying to live what you believe? I believe I'm different. I believe Christ has changed my life, and I haven't been the same over 50 years. And I commend uh, this young couple that 45 years you've been married, Bless you. The Lord bless you. And because marriages are falling apart out there, and we need those individuals to stand up and say, Praise God, I've been married 45 years, and I'm blessed to have my wife or my husband, because we've been walking together in the Lord. Make an opportunity. Well, what do you mean, the Lord? Because the Lord has made a difference in our life. Amen? Amen. 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 And uh, don't be ashamed of it. I've been married to this, what's your name? <laughs> 57 years. Wow. We're going on 58. I can't wait to see what she's going to buy me. <laughs> <laughs> Something nice. <laughs> uh, praise God. Uh, verse 10. He who loves his brother abides in the light. Janice and I were just talking earlier today. There's an in individual that over the years uh, has been interesting. Whenever I don't want to explain something, I'll say that's interesting. Yeah. So you can write, write that down. He always says it's interesting. What did I say? Uh, I don't want to have any bitterness or any unforgiveness in my heart. In fact, I put them top on my list for praying for that. For individuals like that. I say, Lord bless them. You know, the Bible says, don't you compare yourself to others. Be content. Be in a place where you know who you are in Christ. You all know 1 Timothy 6.6, 6, right? No. <laughs> Godliness with contentment is great gain. For you brought nothing into this world, and you will certainly carry nothing out. With food and clothing, be content. For God has supplied all those things. You know, you probably would think I'm a little strange if you came to my home and early in the morning watched me walk into my area where I, I sit in the morning and I walk by my refrigerator and I say, thank you, Lord, for that refrigerator. Keep it working. Keep the repairman out of my house. And I thank you for the stove and all that we have because I know the Lord has provided those things. I just didn't do it that one time when we just got it in there. I do it all the time. I thank the Lord for our home, for our family, our children. And I pray for my family and I say, for me and my house, we will serve the Lord all the days of our life. Amen. Praise God. And I talk, go right down the list. I have a picture on my laptop. I have my son-in-law, uh, my daughter, uh, and now there's been an addition. My granddaughter got married. Sean, I, I pray for him. I don't have a picture, but I, I see him in my, my eye gate there. And uh, John, Big John, one day they're going to walk in here and you people better shape up. <laughs> say that. That's your, that's your grandma. Uh, and then my son and his family. I am so thankful that the Lord has blessed us and kept us. It's not without problems or attacks of the devil. We just know that if our hearts are focused on the Lord, He will be with us. To walk us through the good times, the bad times, the ugly times. God says, I will never leave thee and, or nor forsake thee. So you see what you got there? New King James and the Old King James. <coughs> the. <laughs> All right. Praise God. So, God is good. All the time. All the time. Very good. Very good. Now, verse 11. But 
he who hates his brother is in darkness and walks in darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. Declare you're not going to walk in darkness. You see that individual that might have hurt you along the way? Just look at him and say, Lord, bless him. And then walk on. You know, I would venture to say if we had a discussion here, we'd all have different opinions and see things a little bit different. That's fine. Everyone's not going to agree with me or with you, but we know that if we focus in on the things of God, we have a, a meeting place where we can share our love together. This brother that I was mentioning that I said uh, that uh, he wants me to send them scriptures from time to time just to keep them on straight street. And you, if you said, would you send me a scripture? Well, here's what I said to him this morning. Ask me, let me hear what you say. Uh, Revelation chapter 3. I sent them verse uh, 16. I have 14 through 22. I'll read 22. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Where are the where's the church? Where are the church? Where are the church? Oh, you know what I was going to do? No, I'm not going to do it. Okay. Because I can't build that church with my fingers. <laughs> All right. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. That's the Spirit saying that. You probably say, don't send me that. <laughs> you know, you can't compromise. If someone said, you know, I want God, but I just want Him a little bit, you're going to be miserable. If you want to be happy all the days of your life, get Jesus into your heart and live for Him. Amen. 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 And, then, and I didn't do that with uh, malice or anything. He needs to be challenged. You need to get off the fence. And you need to get in. You need to get your Bible up. Now, fine, you have phones here. You can bring your phone. But get your Bible out and start meditating on the things of God. Do you know in the Bible, in John chapter uh, 10, it says, Jesus said this, My sheep hear my voice. voice. My sheep hear my voice. And they will follow no one else but me. And so I, so he's telling us, you will hear me. And in uh, John 16, he talked about he will guide you and teach you and show you things to come. So if you want to know what's coming down the road, go to the, your prayer closet, that secret place, and seek the Lord. All right. Next, next area that we want to look at is the area, area of uh, the spiritual state of us as believers. And uh, John shifts his, uh, his writing here, and he said, now listen to this, uh, brethren, and uh, starting at verse 12. I write to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for, for his name's sake. Your sins are forgiven. But if you don't go to him and ask for forgiveness, they're not forgiven. You're going to carry it. So if you do stumble, bring them to the Lord, trust that by his sacrifice you are forgiven in him. Verse 13, I write to you fathers because you have known. Now if you read that in another translation, it says that you have, you know, you know him who is from the beginning. You know him. Again, the one area we're looking at, how many times does John say you can know or you, you know you have known him? And so we're looking at that right now in this text. As we go on, I write to you young men because you have overcome the wicked one. Now we don't overcome the wicked one in ourselves. It's because Christ indwells us. And he is our, our strength and our fortune. And so we can walk in him and we know him. I write to you little children because you have known the Father. Or you, have, you know the Father. 
I have written to you, fathers, because you have known him who is from the beginning. And I have written to you, young men, uh, I'm sorry, I have written to you, young men, because you are strong and the word of God, the word of God abides in you. What do you say to that? Amen. Does the word of God abide in you? Yes. Does it really abide in you? And you have overcome the wicked one. Now, this is John, is uh, the same writer that wrote the Gospel of John. And I want to pull, I want to go over to uh, John 15. And as I say that, on the theater of your mind, this does John 15 pop up in your screen? You know, you see pictures in your mind, don't you? When I started doing things, and I could see it by the Spirit. I could see it. And as I began to read the Word of God, it became visual in my mind. And I began to see God, through His Word, was speaking to my heart. Verse 15, verse 1. I am the true vine, my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. Now, the testings that come against you from the evil one, the Bible tells you how to, to get that away from you, how to cast it out. It says, resist the devil and he will flee. But draw near to God. If you draw near to God, he will draw near to you. Think about that. You draw, you say, Lord, I want to draw closer to you. And he said, start right here. Start in my word and you will draw close to me. God is a spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in what? Truth. Truth. What is truth? God's word. Bob was sent me, remember last week, sent me that text, guys crying out, God, speak to me, speak to me, God. I have to hear your voice. And a cloud, out of the cloud reaches down the hand with a Bible and it says, the Holy Bible on it. That's where you start. Amen? Amen? When you get born again, you get a new spirit and the Holy Spirit and he speaks to you. You're different. And you're willing to stand up and declare you're different. Amen. Now listen. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Can you, neither can you unless you abide in me. So you have to abide in the Lord. And the Lord's already in you, and your spirit's been brought, has been made a new through faith in Jesus Christ, things are changing. I am the true vine and you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and it is and it withers and they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. Do you believe that? Yes. Can you believe that? I'll tell you, I believe it with all my heart. You will bear fruit, fruit of the Spirit, joy, hope, gentleness, long-suffering, kindness. Uh, Galatians 5.22-23. You need to bear fruit. Be gentle. Be loving. Be long-suffering. That is the character. That is the very thing that Jesus has given to us by His Spirit. By this, my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples indeed. Are you a disciple of the Lord? Yes. Amen. Okay. Come on. Are you a disciple yes. of the Lord? Yes. yes. Amen. Amen. See, if you all speak up at one time, they didn't know if you answered or not. <laughs> you know, there was a time where I was ashamed of the Lord. I would, 
you know, I didn't want to go to church, I didn't want to be around people like you, it drove me nuts. <laughs> but after I got born again, I understood why you were nuts. <laughs> and why you were weird. Because you had hope, you had assurance, you had love. You loved people that you thought, I would never love that individual. I had a neighbor when we lived in Illinois across the street. We led them to the Lord, my wife and I. Our property burst out into flames and everyone came out and this lady came to, from across the street. His wife was fine. Usually the wife was okay. But the husband was a nut. <laughs> I don't have time to go into that. And she came up to Jan and she says, I don't know what you have but I want it. And it was the living water. Jesus said, out of your innermost being will flow rivers of living water. Folks, we have to allow it to flow out. But it can't flow out unless you pour it in. Amen? Amen. So, start working on that. Now, next week, next, next Sunday, Lord willing, uh, we're going to pick up in the uh, same chapter, but we're going to be in uh, verses 12 through 14. And you, you probably, uh, oh, I'm sorry, uh, 15 through 23. Uh, love not this world. It's hard today to love. There's things that you enjoy, but this world is in a mess. And we're not going to straighten it out. We're looking for the new kingdom, the new place where we will dwell in that holy city with the living God. He's coming one day. Be ready. You do not know the day nor the hour that He's coming. But you, you live with expectation. You live with the hope that any moment He could come and we'd be caught up. And with that I say, come Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right. Praise God. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Some of you have been lagging behind. Some of you, you're saying, I, I want to go all the way, but I'm fearful. If I go all the way, I may leave someone behind in my family. Jesus said, you must sell out. You must give your heart fully to Him. And you must trust me that whatever you give to me, I can take care of. If it's a child or a, uh, some a relative, you need to be a light shining in this world. You need to be a beacon of hope. And we need to start living, talking, and expressing our, our assurance that we have in Him, that we know Him. We know Him without any doubt. I know that Christ lives, and He lives in me. And would you agree to that? And if you agree to that, would you raise your hand? Amen. Amen. Praise God. You know, that's the first step of faith. Lord, we believe, we trust you to guide us, to take us through the troubled times and so forth. Whatever may happen, whatever is down the road, Lord, we know you have all things under control. And Lord, that you will keep us in perfect peace because we keep our minds steadfast and on you, Lord. We keep it in Christ Jesus, our Savior and our Lord. Amen.